Welcome to the Black Box International Business Opportunity Analysis presentation by Laura Anderson, Cecilia Dehe, Sarah Gorgon, Josh Langdon, and Lisa Lee. Constellation Brands is an international alcoholic beverage company whose business operations span beer, wine, and spirits. Constellation Brands has a 2.7% share of the global wine market, making it the second largest competitor in a highly fragmented space. The top three competitors are e j Gallo Winery, followed by Constellation Brands, and then LVMH. Together, these top three account for only 8.6% of a considerable size market. Globally, consumers spend approximately $28.5 trillion of disposable income on wine. Global spending is expected to increase approximately 4% year-over-year year for the next five years, with a moderate decrease thereafter. Currently, the firm has vineyard holdings in the U.S., Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. It markets its wine in all four of these markets, plus the U.K. To date, much of Constellation's size and growth is due to strategic acquisitions. Black Box Wine is one of Constellation Brand's product offerings. The brand emerged in 2003 as a super premium boxed wine with the attempt of breaking the negative connotation of boxed wines, quality, and taste. Black Box flavor profiles are inviting to new and younger wine consumers not used to the traditionally stronger flavor profiles. The wine, retailing for $20 to $25 for a 3 liter box, is marketed to a younger than average wine drinker aged 30 and under. Opportunistic for Black Box, this age segment is expected to drive future wine consumption trends. Winery product offerings compete based on taste, quality, distribution, price, branding, and the types of grape varieties used. These factors indicate high potential for the Black Box brand in an expanded international market. The Black Box brand has been well received in the U.S. and is one of the reasons the firm is assuming market share from the wine group, who produces competitive box offerings such as Franzia. International objectives. By expanding its international presence, Constellation Brands can increase its economies of scale, which is one of the competitive advantages, to minimize its cost and to increase shareholder return. Constellation Brands can also capture new markets and further market growth worldwide. With the black box, unique high quality, low cost perception, Constellation Brands can leverage the strong brand reputation. Thus, Constellation Brands can diversify its risk by further going international. Regarding about risk, Constellation Brands' risk tolerance is high because it has substantial labor resources, assets, and the capital support. We can tell this by its extensive acquisition and the expansion throughout the past several years. Already a leader in the world for wine, Constellation Brands, along with other industry leaders, have saturated the domestic market and are looking at international markets to sustain growth. When deciding a new market to consider for entry, we first green for a region of burgeoning wine consumption and then apply the additional filters by country that took into consideration each country's market characteristics as well as potential market for wine products. When one thinks of international wine markets, top regions that come to mind are Spain, Italy, Germany, and France in Europe, Australia, New Zealand, and Chile. However, while these markets are top importers, they are also close to reaching saturation. But what about Asia? Asia as a whole is expected to be a major driver of worldwide market growth. Rising consumption has been supported by a growing middle-class purchasing power, considerations of health benefits, and wine as a status symbol all of which have boosted markets in China, India, South Korea, and the stable, traditionally big Japanese wine market. All of this is making wine producers around the globe increasingly look to Asia. After an initial global market entry evaluation, the Asian Pacific region has been selected for further analysis. To select the best target entry country, two screenings were applied. The 
first evaluates the general business environment, while the second is a wine industry analysis. The preliminary analysis evaluates over 40 Asian Pacific countries based on macro level indicators. By evaluating GDP and key economic freedom index metrics, the top six countries are selected for additional analysis. GDP analysis is utilized to ensure a base market potential exists. The economic freedom metrics are established to identify potential foreign risk. In an economically free society, individuals are free to work, produce, consume, and invest in any way they please. Additionally, governments allow labor, capital, and goods to move freely and refrain from coercion or constraint of liberty, which is why it is important to evaluate in the preliminary screening. The open market evaluation includes three categories. First, trade freedom evaluates tariff and non-tariff barriers which affect import and export of goods and services. Next category, investment freedom evaluates ease of moving resources internally and across countries' borders without restriction. Lastly, financial freedom is an indicator of banking efficiency as well as a measure of independence from government control and interference in the financial sector. The second economic freedom index metric is regulatory efficiency. The first category is business freedom, which is an overall indicator of government efficiency in regulation of business. The next category, monetary freedom, combines a measure of price stability with an assessment of price controls. The last category, labor freedom, is a quantitative measure that considers the legal and regulatory framework of a country's labor market. The third and final economic freedom index metric, rule of law, has two evaluation categories. The first category, property rights, is a qualitative assessment of the extent to which a country's legal framework allows individuals to freely accumulate and protect private property. The second category evaluates freedom from corruption and is derived primarily from Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index. By effectively evaluating economic freedom index metrics, foreign risk is identified and can be managed, ensuring the selected countries are suitable for successful market entry and sustainable operations. Out of over 40 countries, here are the preliminary screening results showing the top six highest scoring countries. Again, the preliminary screening evaluates GDP to ensure a base market potential exists and economic freedom index scores to evaluate potential foreign risk. As you can see, the top six scoring countries from highest to lowest are China, Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, India, and South Korea. These six countries will be analyzed further in the final screening while the other countries have been eliminated for potential target market entry. To identify the top country for market entry, a final screening has been established to evaluate the wine industry in the final six countries. The focus of the final screening is to identify the country that would present black box with the greatest potential market share to meet our main international objectives of capturing new markets to become more risk diverse and increase shareholder value. By evaluating total wine consumption and growth projections, a country's total market share can be identified. Next, by considering total wine consumption versus imports, a more suitable market share for black box is established. Additionally, an evaluation of wine imports currently from the U.S. market establishes a baseline confirming the economic freedom and business logistics are acceptable for operations. Lastly, by evaluating wine consumption compared to total alcohol consumption, it can be inferred if wine is not a drink of choice when considering a substitute. After performing a wine industry evaluation, China is clearly the top choice for market entry. Not only does China consume the most wine, they also import the most wine and have the fastest wine consumption growth projections. After evaluating market attractiveness, China emerged as a preferred country for entry. Although China is currently only the fifth largest consumer of wine in the world as of 2013, it has both the largest and fastest growing market, as well as one of the highest degrees of wine exports in the Asia and Pacific region. This is due to the country's rapidly increasing middle class population and average income level. Since 2006, the Chinese wine market has experienced a 20% annualized growth rate and is forecast to grow by another 54% by 2015. By 2016, total wine consumption in China is expected to near 400 million unit cases. If so, and other markets hold steady, China is on track to become the largest global wine consumer. With all factors in play, China is certainly an attractive market for black box with entry level, yet somewhat sophisticated black wine products. To get the quality of award-winning bottled wine for 40% less, lose the bottle. Award-winning black box wines, 28 gold medals, 40% less expensive than comparable wines. 
black box wine coming to an international market near you soon.